Oh yeah. Junior left in the class. Remember that? Didn't we find some like <laughs> some in New York? It was like I don't even remember, it was, but it was a in a building. Mm -hmm. It was like forty-eight million dollars for that. It's like, yeah. well, we do have a swimming pool. That was, that was so fun. Yeah, I remember that. That was awesome. All right. So, is number eight where I is number eight where I stopped and stumbled? Okay. So number eight, which two quantitative data sets maintain the entire data set while well, stem plots and dot plots? They they will have both everything in there. What's that? No. But you could you could probably with the knowledge y'all have of how to do phone stuff, I bet you could scan this, shrink this, and adhere it to a three by five note card. So, I mean, I, I think that's a good idea. But, hey, Swanee's here. We can now start. Yeah, we, we, we'd have class three times. All right. Number nine, number nine. Which which quantitative data displays handle very large data? Well, box plots deal with large data very well. Uh huh. And then also histograms. Okay, it doesn't really matter what you're putting in. Number ten. Name three measures of central tendency. All right, wait. May, name three measures of center. Identify which measures are most influenced by outliers. So mean, which is the average. Outliers destroy the mean. Okay. Mode. We don't really talk about mode all that much. It's the most occurring number. And then the median, which is the middle of the data. Okay. Yeah, so the mean doesn't like outliers. It moves. Identify three measures of spread. Identify which measures are highly influenced by outliers. Okay, so range is going to mess with outliers. Right, because the range is the biggest minus the smallest. IQR is not influenced. Remember, that's you know on a box and whiskers. IQR is uh, Q1, Q3. So Q3 minus Q1 is how you get the IQR. That is not influenced by outliers because the outside stems are pull, you know pulling the stems out further, not affecting the count of data. Standard deviation, standard D, outliers won't influence it, okay? So the two that are mainly influenced most by, by outliers are those two. Good enough? All right, and so for your own sanity, I would say, I know I said you can use as many note cards as possible, I would say limit it to about 10 because you're going to go insane. You're going to have the kid who comes walking in. Like a box of note cards. He's got, all right, I'm ready for the test. And you're like, how many note cards you got? I'm like 56. You're not going to finish. I mean, if you come in with 11 or 12, I'm fine with it. But I'm just trying to look out for your well-being as well. Um. Then we get to number 12. This is where we need to kind of talk a little bit more. 2, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5, 7. Okay. Did you get all done? Yeah. Thanks so much. See you in a couple hours. All right. Identify the shape of each. Okay. Identify the shape of each. So, if you... If you just kind of looked at this, if you, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Of course, we have nine. 
2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. If we went and found the mean, these items over here are pulling the mean to the right. Agreed? The median, the median of this data is right here. But this is pulling the mean to the right. Got it? So this means this would be skew right. Okay? So I'm not even working out the problem. I just recognize that I have my list in order. The median is the fifth number. But then these numbers right here are going to impact the mean. The 22222, two, 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 that was keeping the mean small. And then it, they, it grows faster. So this is a skew right type of thing. So think about what skew right kind of looks like. Uh, where am I at? I was going to say there's 10 and 11. Wow. Okay, go to the 12 first, then I'll go back to the 10 and 11. I just real when I looked down at my paper going, oh, I didn't write. Yeah, okay. Okay, so skew right. Think about what skew right really looks like. It, it's a normal curve that does that. That's skew right. Okay. How skew right works is you get your median here, but then your mean is drawn to the side. Whatever the side the mean is drawn to, that's how it's going to skew. Now, I'm not asking you to know how to draw that. I just need you to kind of visualize of what that would take place if you were to look at it. Okay? And again, I'm down at number 12. Yes, I have to go back to 10 and 11 because I didn't deal with that. So that's this is letter A. Letter B, we have 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, and 5. So I have 9 pieces of data, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's my median. Okay, so what do you think the shape of this kind of looks like? It's got to be normal. Okay, now some people could argue if you were to go and, you know, technically we've designed this test not to, you, you're totally allowed to use a calculator, but it's designed not to use a calculator. So if it's designed not to use a calculator, I, if I give you something that the data is that close, you have to realize this is probably pretty close to normal. Okay. If you truly plugged in the data and you did the one variable statistics, you might find the mean and median are not the exact same. But as far as this goes, I mean, our mean has got to be about here as well. So it's a normal distribution, which basically means the mean and the median are in the middle. I'm on number 12 at the bottom. I skipped number 10 and 11 on accident because we have like 19 number 10 and 11s. Does that make sense? For those of you who are having a hard time following on, I'm on the front, back, front. So the second page, the front of the second page. Make sense? All right, letter C. Now we haven't really talked about this one a whole lot, but it's pretty simple when you look at it. What does this look like? Any idea? Yeah, it's uniform. Good. Uniform data, when you plug it in, kind of just looks like this. Okay, it doesn't really have a fun shape to it or not. So take care of that. Um, so uniform, if you see like sequences of numbers that just repeat, and then letter D, if you have 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, 7, this is a bimodal, meaning that your mode is repeating. You have the 6, 6 here, and you have the 3 here. Three here. So if I had tried to graph this, it would kind of look like this. Okay, you got, got the humps in there. Bimodal. I guess so. All right, now let's go to the top of that page because, you know, Stirrup can't number, he can't count. Number. Yeah, because we have number 10, then number 11, then we have number 10, and then 11 again. 
All right, use a stem plot to find the largest observation. Yeah, 150 is the largest. Yay. Um, if I wanted to find the range of this, so that's the answer to A. B, if I find the range, I'm going to take 150 and I'm going to subtract 34, which is my smallest. So that comes out to 116. Okay. And then the shape of this, we're going to call the shape of this skew right. Now let's talk about why it would be skew right. Um, if you look at kind of what the shape of that looks like, it does look something like this. So we have this weird hump because we have a bunch of this stuff in the middle. But if I found the middle of my data, if I found the middle of my data, my middle of my data is like about 89, the median. Okay, just by eyeballing it. But I do have 150. Like I go, for, it goes from 100 to 104 to 148 or 108, and then it goes all the way to 150 because I have that 150. The 150 is pulling it way out, so that's why it's skew right. So, so yeah. For the data on the stem plot that doesn't have any number after it, I mean, there's no data. At you're all. just putting those numbers in as placeholders. Okay, so there's no 120. There's no 40, no 110, 120, 130, 140. Okay. So, an outlier on this one, it's got to be the 150. Okay. And we don't really, we're not going to have you go and tell me the test because if you remember, it was 1.5 times the IQR to get an outlier to figure it out. You're not going to have to do that. You're just going to have to look at it and it's just use obvious saying, if my, if my three last pieces of information are 100, 104, 108, and then you get the obscure 150, that 150 is way out there. All right, and this is the other number 11. So a normal distribution will look like this, okay? Bimodal has the two humps in it, okay? Uniform looks like just a rectangle. And then skew left would look like this. And skew right would just be the flip flop of that. Okay, and then the thing just to remember: skew left means the you have the median, and then the mean is less than it. And that's pulling it to the left. Skew right means I have the median, and the mean is greater. That's basically the things you look at. So if, if I were to give you just two things, if I were to say, hey, you have a median of 40 and a uh, mean of 100, it's skew right because the mean is to the right. You're basically looking at what's pulling it outside. Okay, the mean is telling you information. All right, did I officially get that page done? Yes. Yeehaw. And I think I'll get down to... How big is... How many numbers are on this packet. Well, I can't tell you how many numbers are on this packet because it starts renumbering again. <laughs> All right. Oh, it starts renumbering again because it goes to a different unit. Explain the meaning of each statement. So this is number 13. Of course, if we numbered the pages, it'd be easier to find. I go front, back, front, back. So it's the back of the second page. Explain the meaning of each. The mean number of points scored by the Colorado Av Avalanche is 4.1. So, just basically means if I take all of the Avalanche scores in every game, divide by the number of games, I get the average. So, they, they average 4.1 goals per game. That's usually where you get the one kid saying, how do you score 4.1 goals? Well, you, you don't. It's, it's an average. Huh? Is that the actual average? No, it's made up. Oh. You think we're going to work that hard? We're going to make all kinds of stuff up. 
And you're like, what did you learn in math today? Everything's a lie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 13B, the median number of tickets sold for a theater performance is 450. Okay? So if that's the median, that means that half the performances have less than 450 and half the performances have more than 450. 450 is the middle. That's all it really means. The standard deviation of grades in chemistry class is 12. So remember a standard deviation, and this is how bad math is because we use, we use the definition, the word in the definition. Chemistry grades typically deviate from the mean by 12 points. So standard deviation, you're using deviate, use the shorter version. So it basically, a standard deviation, if I go one standard deviation either way and I have a normal distribution, one standard deviation from the mean on a normal distribution should encompass 68% of all scores. Okay, that's where 68% of the area underneath the normal curve would exist. Okay, standard deviation can indeed be negative. That's fine. The IQR of the times from DTC to downtown is 14 minutes. So, so letter D, 13D, they talk about the IQR. So this, this relates to the stem and leaf. Okay, so remember the stem and leaf looks something like this. So this is Q1, this is Q3, this is the median. So the IQR is just Q3 <coughs> minus Q1. Okay. That should be pretty simple. And for those of you who came in late, I have said that it doesn't matter how many note cards you have, but I said probably 10 is fine, except when you're the kid that walks in with this going, I've got everything here. Oh, and then this is all you hear during the test. No, 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 maybe, no. And then you know this is going to happen during the test. Oh. And that would encompass giggles. You know, I probably should have just thrown it just a couple weeks down. But it has better effect going them all. Okay, I'll only do that once. Good thing I only have one period of this. Uh, today's high temperature was an outlier. That just basically meant if we had all these average temperatures, and let's say today was 105 degrees. We don't see 105 degrees in December here. We normally don't see 105 degrees here ever. Well, I know. You know, all of the trees are confused. They're starting to start flooding again. It's great. I love it. All right. Does that make sense? So, you know, if they said today's high temperature is an outlier, that just means that the temperature is so far above or below the mean. So far above and below the median. All right. Number 14, assume that the mean is equal to the median in the data set. What conclusion can we draw? Our shape is symmetric. Doesn't necessarily mean it's normal, it just means it's symmetric. Okay. Can I finish chapter one, unit one? All right. 15. So front, back, front, back, front, I think. Number 15. I don't think I had any other 15s on this area. All right. Uh, five number summary for the lecture bill for the past five years is as follows Find each if possible. So, being that we designed the test, but you're allowed to, but we designed the test not to do it with a calculator. If I asked this question on the test, if I said, hey, find the mean, I would just say, this, would, this is the only thing you'd have to do. That's how I find the mean. Did I do any math? No, I just put an addition sign in between, count it up. The number of things. So I guess I did some, you know, first grade math counting. Can I find the median off this? 
Yeah, it's in order. It's the median. Can I find the range? Yeah, the range is uh, range is 128 minus 58, which is 70. So yeah, calculator would be fine. Found upper outlier boundary. Lower outlier boundary. I don't think I have to worry about any of those. The upper outlier boundary, they say, is... Uh, oh. Guys... Can I find the mean off this? No. Can I find the mean off this? It's a five number summary, so I can't find the mean. Can't find the mean. Because it, 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 it's, it's not all the data. It just says, hey, we have a 58 is a min, a 74 is here, a 78 is here, a 90 is here and a 128 is here. The mean lives somewhere in there, but I can't find it. It wasn't just a list of numbers, it was the five number summary. The, me the median is the middle. The median is always the number on the five number summary. This is our min, this is our max, this is Q1, this is Q3, and this is our median, or Q2. All right. The upper outlier boundary, the lower outlier boundary. My friends, I don't think I saw that on the uh, final. Why don't you just get us the final now and we'll just look over it for you. Okay. We'll let you know. yeah. okay. Can we just take the final home? We'll bring it back to the day of the test. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. I, I, I know. It sounds like the best idea ever. Um, no, it's 114 and 50. What they do is the uh, IQR, so they go the 90 minus 74 times 1.5. Um, so, but I didn't. I don't remember seeing that on there. Wait, what was the IQ? IQR is Q3 minus Q1. Oh, okay. And we're not worrying about standard deviation. Standard deviation you can't find from this either. Okay, and then I would not ask you on a five. Well. What do you think? Is this skewed right or left? Skewed right. Why? What's sticking out for you? Yeah, the 120. I, th I think it would be slightly skewed right. I mean, if, in order for you to really see it, you'd have to make sure your box and whiskers was 100% appropriate. We can't find it. The mean and standard deviation, they do exist in the, fi in the box and whiskers somewhere, but the five number summary doesn't tell us. That's why you get note cards there, Sunshine. <laughs> Wait, so because it's a five number summary, you can't find the median or the standard deviation. Right. So is that like for all five number summaries? Yes. Okay. Now, it, it would be coincidental if if one of the parts of the five number summary was the mean, or the uh, Q1 and Q3 happened to just become the um, standard deviation. That would be a coincidence, but if I'd never summoned, you normally wouldn't have that sitting there. All right. Based on the shape, what can you conclude about the mean? Okay, you told me it was skew right. So the mean would have to be higher than what? How much? The median. So the mean would have to be more than 78. Though I don't know exactly what it would be, but because it's skew right, because of that 128, that means the mean is going to be pulled to the right from the median, and that's what's making it skew right. How many outliers in the original data? Briefly, explain briefly. Um, we might be able to say 128 is an outlier, but I'm not expecting you to go Q1 plus Q3 times 1.5 to figure that out. Okay, what percent of electric bills are higher than 74? So what? how many electric bills would be higher than 74? Yeah, 75, because that this is 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%. So I'm at 74, 25, 25, 25 is 75. Yeehaw. 
Approximately what electric bill is at the 30th percentile? Okay, so let's think about this. 30th percentile, if this is the 25th percentile here, and this all the way here is the 50th percentile, the 30th percentile is somewhere in here. So the 30th percentile would be a, a something bigger than 74, but smaller than 78. Okay, what exactly would it be? I don't have enough information, but I could say, if, it, if you were to give an answer of like 75 or 76, 77, you might be getting a little too close to the 50th percentile. So, so somewhere in there. All right, 16, come on, right? Yeah. All right, 4, 10, 12, 14, 20. This is 20. This is a five number summary. So what do you think? The distance from here is six, the distance from here is two, two, six. Okay, this is a five number summary. Is it skewed right or left? Neither, so I would say it's relatively normal. Okay, because this is a five number summary, so the min Q1, median Q3, uh, max. And basically all I did, I realized I was six to six, two to two, those are the distances between those. So it looked relatively normal. If I look at B, I get 10, 12, 15, 19, 25. See if I can use the same logic. From here to here is two, from here to here is three, from here to here is four, from here to here is six. Yeah, it's definitely skew right. Okay, that 25 is pulling it out there. Okay. Uh, and then if I have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, the difference between each of these, this, again, this is a five number summary, is just five. So what do you think? Uniform. It's uniform, yay. And then number 17, number 17, sketch a normal distribution, box and whiskers. Yeah. So if you drew something that is like this, this is relatively normal. Meaning, this distance and this distance are about the same. These two distances are the same. That's all it means. I know I just stood in front of the majority of you. So this distance here is the same as this distance. The tails are the same distance. The boxes are about the same distance. That's basically a normal distribution. So you want symmetry. All right. That's all I have. We'll do unit two tomorrow. Same deal? Yeah. Did, did I say go do unit two? No. It's up to you if you want to take a look at unit two, but we will take care of that more tomorrow. Homeworks.